despite their neurosis, not because of their neurosis. And that's one of the most liberating thoughts you could ever have in your life. Because I've known people who are creative who fed their neuroses thinking they'd be more creative, and they acted out being creative. You've seen the, the, the uh, pseudo-artists, the poseur. You've seen them. You've seen the acts they go through to make themselves jumpy and crazy and wild. And most of those types are called poseurs, and they come to nothing. The really great artists that I have met, and I met only a few in my life, are very stable, very, very middle-class looking individuals, incidentally. Those who show you how creative they are, whether it's through their look or their, their the behavior, are usually fakers, what the French call poseurs. So the bottom line here is that if you're a younger person and you're trying to figure out how to act, which you all, everyone's doing, if you're trying to figure out how to act, by the way, you're not alone. Everyone's trying to figure out how to act. When you get older, you don't have to figure it out anymore. It's too late already. Your act is over. But the thing is, uh, you don't have to ape being creative if you're creative. Just be creative. Just do your work. You don't have to show people how, how brilliant you are with your, your outfits and your this, green hair and a nose ring and an eye ring. It's unnecessary. It's just to show you a while when you're really not. What tattoos on your eyelid. Uh, the fact is, is that as soon as you get a little older, you'll want the tattoos and the rings removed and then get back to work. So I was going to ask you to describe the most creative person you've ever met. I thought it would make for an inter interesting show. And I have a couple of callers on, on, on that, as well as the new stuff. I know many of you are meat and potatoes conservatives. All you want to hear is immigrants, Trump, uh, George Ramos, who works for PuniVision. Did that bring a chuckle to your heart? Did anyone steal? Who stole PuniVision from me so far? Can anyone tell me who stole PuniVision? My name for Univision after the uh, inter interview with Trump. Can anyone raise their hand? Does anyone know who stole PuniVision from Michael Savage? I'm used to it. Okay, steal this idea and I'll sue you. It's different than Abby Hoffman. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Turn it off. I, I'm not in the mood today, sorry. It's not the right time of day for fast rock and roll and I'm not 13 years old anymore with a ducktail haircut. I think we'll have to go to another format of music. The Rock and Roll Friday works, I mean, up to a point, but if it's the wrong timing, and radio is all about timing, it just didn't sound right to me. More in the mood for Mozart, but that would kill the audience altogether. Do you think the people who are out there listening to talk radio want to hear Mozart? I don't even want to hear Mozart. Moody neurotics more likely to be creative geniuses. All right, that's an interesting story, but maybe not to you. Maybe not to you. I don't know. To me, it's interesting. And there's a rule in radio. If it's interesting to the host, it's generally interesting to the audience because it's called talk radio. We're the leaders of the conversation of our own show. I'm going to sit here and read the Drudge Report. You've all read it. You heard it all morning. And you can read it in you know 30 seconds or 60. And you get this, the news. I can't just read websites and then read a story and ask you what you think of it. Like Hillary already has the votes. Now, you want me to talk about that? Or TSA agent charged in molestation at LaGuardia Airport. Do you think I'm going to just read these things to you? That she lured or he lured a student into the bathroom? Or do you think that I'm going to talk about a, a storm battering the Caribbean heading for Florida? Or do you think that I'm going to talk about the story that he has? Will ABC News release full Vester Flanagan manifesto? I'm not going to talk about these things. Or, or, or the other headlines on the Drudge Report. Huma operates at center of Clinton University. I'm not going to talk about it. Or the black transgender lives matter activist disrupt event. Or Ashley Madison CEO steps down a wake of hack. I am not going to talk about that. I am not going to talk about the fact that Jeb Bush is so yesterday that he's raffling off tickets to a debut somewhere with, with a guy who failed in television. Who was it who just left TV? Is he, is he going to introduce Jeb, Jeb Bush next? Here, Russian billionaire building $450 million super yacht. You want me to talk about that? Good luck to him. He didn't steal it from me. He stole it from the Russian people, not from me. It's their problem. Why would anyone build a $450 million super yacht? Why not just buy an old ocean liner and, and use it as your and refurbish it? Well, okay, it's not new. I want to look at that story. That story is interesting to me. Uh, or do you want to do the creative? You want me to get the creative? Uh, there we go. You see, I got the people who like the creative side. What do you do when you have six billion pounds to spend? Russian billionaire splashes out 292 million pounds super yacht he designed himself to enjoy with his supermodel wife. Mr. Melnichenko 
spent $450 million on a luxury ship, which will be named the Sailing Yacht A. It boasts eight decks, a glass observation measure, crew of around 54, largest privately owned. Well, it's going to put Geffen into a tailspin. The masts are taller than Big Ben's tower, and its sails are bigger than a football field when all are flying. All right, so good luck to him. How do he steal his money? How do he make his money? How do he re rob his money? How do he steal his money? Look at the super yacht. Man. She's a real mutt. I'm sorry. I don't want to get... What do you mean supermodel? She looks like a mousy broad from Yemen. Where did he get her from? God in heaven, what passes for supermodel today? What is everybody who's slim a supermodel now? I don't happen to like being on yachts, incidentally. And don't think I'm jealous. I'm not. I could be uh, on a yacht right now if I had sense, if I had brains. If I wasn't so creative, frankly, I'd be on a yacht in the Mediterranean instead of being on the radio. <laughs> you know, that's absolutely the truth. And it's perfect weather now in the Mediterranean. I've been invited. Come to the Mediterranean, come for a week, come for two weeks, sit on the boat. I can't. Here's why I don't go on a yacht. I get nervous. After one meal, I want to leave. It's that simple. I want to be in my own little bed with my dog. Okay, so you could take your dog to the med. Then what? I'm going to march around the streets of... Of saint -Tropez. What am I going to see? Frenchmen with long faces who have lost their nation because they're so silly? I'm going to have a wonderful meal. I can't have a meal here. Wherever I go, I cook, I cook better food myself, to be honest with you. I am so over restaurants. Whatever I say, low salt, no spices, a little spice, not too much spice. I don't want it too bland like a hospital meal. Put in a touch of spice, but don't make it like it's in Guadalajara. Make it a little more like Italian rather than Mexican. Uh, I want the sauce to be red sauce. I want the tomato. But it doesn't come out that way. I get a bottle of sauce and throw it on spaghetti, and I cook the spaghetti soft, and it's perfect. I watch a TV show. I don't have to stare at a wall. But people like these things, and it's all about showing off. Here it is. Okay, he founded the fertilizer producer Eurochem, the coal producer Suec, the power, genera pa power generator SGK, and the pipe exporter TMK, along with Sergei Popov. That's interesting. Now, I don't want to go into Russian uh, uh, oligarchs because they're very dangerous. But you see, when you hear that they founded these companies, what it really means is uh, they took it from the state and they became rich that way, along the lines of what senators in the United States of America do with the solar business. Since senators in the United States cannot outright steal the coal industry, they create an alternative industry which has no validity whatsoever at this time in human history, called solar. Now, we all want things to run off the sun. And what they do is they make billions of dollars on industries they create with government grants. Do you get how it works? Which is why the fool on the hill goes down there to Las Vegas and lectures on solar plants the right after the vacation with the billionaires and how evil coal is. And the biggest coal basher in America, George Soros, that fraud, that money-changing, back-of-the-temple fraud that Jesus warned us about. Jesus warned us about George Soros. That double-talking money-changer in the back of the temple bashes coal for a year and drives the price of the number one coal company down from $98 a share to a dollar a share, and then he buys it at a dollar a share. And they say to him, isn't that hypocrisy? And he gives him the middle finger, him and his sons. Well, now you understand how revolutions are, are caused. Now you understand what revolutions are come from. Now you understand what happens after revolutions. Now you understand when you look at Mussolini, for example, and what they did to him at the end of the road, hanging him upside down with the, with the mistress, like a, like, a, like a side of beef, because he did such things to the Italian people. Unbelievable. So eventually people freak out. Hopefully it'll never happen here. You know, it can't happen here. It will never happen here. It won't happen here. Uh, Andrea Melchinek is known in the sailing world as a pioneering owner I, oh, I said I wouldn't read these stories. What teeth on him? He looks like a werewolf, this guy. He scares me. Let's see. Oh, supermodel. There they are, stepping high. They have acquired a second sport. Oh, he's got a dog like mine. He's a nice guy. The couple regularly party on their $300 million first yacht with celebrity. A celebrity. Oh, here comes a celebrity. Hello. Hey, there's a celebrity coming aboard. Pipe him on, <laughs> pipe him on the ship. Hey, he's not like us. A celebrity is like you and I, only they have more celebrity. It's that simple. That's a takeoff from something written by a, a friend of Ernest Hemingway who said the rich are like you and I, only they have more money. I mean, what do you think? They're different because they're celebrities? See, their shoes cost more, their jeans cost more, their dogs cost more, their servants cost more. But at the end of the day, what do you think it is? You have to learn how to live with yourself. Do you know all of these things yet? 
Does anyone know all of this stuff at this point in their life who have to teach you everything every day? A lot of it is showing off that you have the money, and that's the end of it. We all do it up to a certain point. Uh, what did I want to say before I got distracted by the Drudge Report when I said I would not read the Drudge Report? I got distracted by the Moda Yacht. Maybe I do want to go to the Caribbean for a week in September before uh, the book comes out. And I have to start telling you why you should. But you, because you should understand that it's an important book. And I'm not ready for it. It's too soon. It's not Labor Day. And the school is back already. The brats are back in school already. Thank God. Thank God they're not in the streets getting into trouble. I'm glad they're back in school. What are they learning? What are they teaching them in school now? America is bad. Mother and father are bad. The church is evil. Let's see. White males stole the world and made it unsafe for minorities. Let's see what else they teach. The flag is an evil sign of oppression. Um, yeah, that's that's basically the teaching now because the psychotic vermin took over the schools as well as everything else. Okay, we got the creative calling. We got this calling, that calling. Well, am I near a break yet? No. Who's the greatest uh, caller on the creative uh, issue? Wayne is not bad. Then we got one on gun control and mental health. Because I said yesterday, we have to find a way to keep guns out of the hands of the mentally ill. Oh, did they go crazy. I happen to not be a fan of the NRA. I don't like Wayne LaPierre. I'll be very honest with you. I think that they're all greedy and they're in it for themselves. Now, up to a point, they do a good job. But like any other organization, it's all about the greenbacks for themselves. And the, don't put them on a pedestal. The founding fathers were different than you. And I love those guys. Why the founding fathers were different than you and I. How were they different than you and I? They were not superhumans. They didn't come from another planet. They were slaveholders. They were piggish. Some of them were not piggish. And they created a country and they wrote some good documents. And by the way, the great founding fathers, for those of you who buy this malarkey, one of the first things they enacted after the American Revolution was putting together the, the biggest army that had ever been seen in America to put down the Whiskey Rebellion, uh, amongst farmers who didn't want to pay a tax on the whiskey they were making for themselves. There's your founding fathers for you. So I'm tired of making people into what they aren't. We are all basically at a, at a certain point the same. Some of us are far more intelligent than others. Some are stupider than others. Some are meaner than others. Some are more beautiful than others. Some, But the thing is, is ultimately, at the end of the day, what are we? We're dust. We go back to dust. We start as a well, I read the Bible on this. It's pretty ugly. They're pro. They're depressed, those guys. You know, the prophets were all depressed when you think about it. If you look, if you look at Isaiah and those guys, man, they needed medication. They were so depressed. They were walking around ancient Israel at the time. Everyone else was having a good time. They had leather sandals on. They were slaughtering sheep. They were knocking off lamb for lunch. They were uh, behaving like uh, this super yacht guy. They were having as much sex as they could everywhere they wanted. So these guys hated it because they didn't have any of that. They were probably miserable and poor. So they wrote a book, God's going to punish you if you have too good at the... You will be cast into the, into the fires of hell. How dare you enjoy yourself? Be like me, miserable and horrible. Walk around in misery, utter misery every second of your life. Wear ugly clothing. Stutter if you have... That's what it comes down to. A lot of it's based on jealousy. Okay, uh, did, did you have enough time yet? It's now 45 minutes after the hour in the Savage Nation. We are at cruising altitude. You can take off your seatbelts. You can walk around the cabin. You can please listen to the steward eye when they tell you to, re to return to your seat or else we will strap you in your seat. We will muffle your mouth with tape and we will have you arrested for disrupting the Savage Nation. In a moment, I shall return with more wit and wisdom on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It's the Savage Nation. Every day, another surprise where my heart drops out of my chest. And uh, we're talking about a number of topics, some in the news, some out of the news, uh, what's going on. And the biggest story of the day is whatever story is to you the biggest story. Let's take some callers. Nick on line 2, WMAL, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yes, Dr. Savage, your uh, story about the, uh, the moody neurotics and the artistic streak, I, I think I'm one of them. I heard it, I, I read the, uh, the article a little bit this morning, and I almost crap myself. <laughs> I, I'm like, oh my God, this is describing me. Uh, I'm, I'm a writer. Uh, I've, all, I've written since I was six. I, I'm a 
recently, in June, a former political satirist and a former political uh, or 